Good evening again, and welcome to 1969. Or at least a, a simulacrum of same. And uh, um, Jay Blakesburg can't be here tonight, so Craig MacArthur is going to fill in and uh, be our be my moderator here to, tonight. <laughs> and keep him under control for the night. It's been a crazy night so far. I, uh -huh. I, I'll just think of myself as his Ed McMahon. <laughs> Ha-ha, that dates me, doesn't it? Who's the guy now? Paul Schaefer. All right, getting into 1969, everybody. 69. 1969. Some interesting facts. The cost of a new home was $27,000. The median household income was $8,000. Cost of gas was 35 cents a gallon. Um... U.S. population just reached 200 million people. Uh, right now it's 320 million people. Um, Richard Nixon becomes president. Good old tricky dick. <laughs> um, Vietnam War is still going on. Um, but the U.S. withdrawal starts to begin around then. But it also is also when the uh, first draft lottery since World War II starts. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and there's also lots of nuclear testing going on around this time, Still like good. more than ever. Um, <laughs> uh, April, uh, or actually November 20th, uh, Alcatraz Island is seized by militant Native American Indians. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, the space race is in full effect. Um, first men on the moon were, it was uh, July 20th. Um, and also... Uh, that was Apollo 11, and Apollo 12 was also the third and fourth man. And Phil had something to say about, uh, about the man on the moon. Yeah, uh, the, man, the man on the moon is now Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and those guys. But you have to wonder what they really found there. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, April 7th was the Internet's symbolic birth date. Believe it or not, it was the first publication of an RFC, which is a request for comments. Um, it's also the year the first human eye transplant was performed. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Sesame Street premieres on PBS TV. Yeah. Um, the Beatles performed their last live gig on the rooftop of Apple headquarters. Um, pretty cool. Um, Abbey Road was recorded and released. Um, John and Yoko staged their first bed-in perf uh, piece performance in Amsterdam. The band, formerly known as the Hawks, performed their first concert ever. Uh, Monty Python comedy troupe forms. Uh, uh, the Johnny Cash Show debuts on ABC. Uh, Brian Joan leaves the Rolling Stones and re is replaced by Mick Taylor. Um, Led Zeppelin's first album comes out. And Cream's final album comes out, and they perform their last concert at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, and then getting into the Grateful Dead, coming into uh, that year. Um, early January, they perform at Playboy After Dark with Hugh Hefner. It was kind of a non-event, I can tell you. <laughs> Um, they released two albums that year. Um, the first one being this guy right here, Oxamoxa. And uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about this with Phil. Any uh, memories or anecdotes from that? Well, yeah. I mean, this is the, this is the album we recorded complete twice. So we're we're busily working away. We've been been playing. I think we've been playing these songs on the road and and uh, getting them together. And and we're in the studio recording and we're you know laying down the tracks and putting the vocals on the suite and everything. And just as we're just as we're finishing tracking, we get we get the news that the studio has just acquired a 16-track tape machine. Whereas we were recording, were recording on a mere eight track. So through what, 
convoluted thought processes I'll never know we decided that we were going to re-record the album from scratch on 16 track just so we could put more stuff on it I guess which turned out and, and, and the irony of all that is that when we finally when we finally uh, completed it and, 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 and mixed it down and, and we're ready to put it out we just decided, oh, that, that there's too much stuff on it. So we had to mix it all again down to where it would have been if we'd done it on an 8-track. <laughs> no, this is how the Grateful Dead does things. And it, as it turned out, it was their most expensive album to make. It cost $180,000 to make, which even today I mean, is... Ass Backwards doesn't even begin to cover it. Second album they put out, um, which is kind of a, a bonus for the year, was Live Dead. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of similar story behind that as well. Um, th these were recorded at, I think, a carousel, no, no at the, uh, the carousel in uh, Avalon, or maybe it was a Fillmore in the Avalon, yeah, because we had like a three or four night run. And uh, I think the second night at the first, the first ballroom, whatever it was, we had it, we had it, we had it, except we didn't because Bear had not been able to get a signal from Bob's number 13 line driver. So his entire guitar track was missing for the whole evening. So, but it's, it's strange how we, 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 did, we just knew we could go back and do it again and we did. We went back and we did it again the next night. And uh, it was different, of course, but, and, but we got all the tracks that time. And so we recorded that one twice, too. This was also the year that uh, um, Robert Hunter moved in with Jerry. Um, and where was that? What's that was right up, uh, right up the canyon in Larkspur, just by, uh, by the Lark Creek in there. The, when you go back up in the, in the, on, on the hill there, it was back there. Yeah, so uh, Janice had a place up there in, on that street, too, uh, off of that road. Um, so, uh, and then right after that, August 15th, uh, the Grateful Dead perform at Woodstock. Um, this was an anti-performance, I can guarantee Yeah, you. and why don't you tell us a little bit about <laughs> Woodstock, though? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's historically, it's part of the historical record by this time. But, uh, so there we are, and it's our turn to play to this huge audience, and it's totally raining and storming and muddy and wet and there's lightning strikes everywhere and there, there's no ground electrical ground for the equipment on stage they had a 50 foot pipe in the ground and st could still make it, not get dry ground to ground the electronics so, and the mud was so muddy rather than solid that uh, the wind was pushing on these uh, the uh, screen, the uh, uh, visual effects screen behind the stage, and literally pushing the stage very slowly <laughs> through the mud towards the audience. <laughs> okay, so into this tippy toe, the Grateful Dead. Ah ha ha ha! Let's go play a gig. And then, of course, the uh, entire sound system and lights go off but not before Bob has been zapped and knocked 10 feet back from the microphone by a, a faulty ground. And, um, <laughs> and then, then what happened? Oh yes, we, we tried to start, we started to play and uh, of course the PA wasn't putting the instruments out. The, uh, the, the vocal systems for some reason was working and, but none of our, well, uh, the, the, there was a, a, a phantom microphone that was overriding all of the <laughs> all of the other mic inputs. Some crazy beware of the brown acid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I've read a transcription of it, and it is it is totally <clears throat> it, it's batshit. It's batshit. Sorry. Um, that year, the Grateful Dead uh, debuted, debuted a whole bunch of songs. Um, Dupree's Diamond Blues, uh, Doing That Rag, 
Casey Jones, Dire Wolf, High Time, Easy Wind, Cumberland Blues at the very end of the year, uh, Black Peter, Uncle John's Band, Mason's Children, and New Speedway Boogie, all that that year. Hunter and Garcia kicking ass on that one. Man. Yeah. Um, to close out the year, um, it ended with uh, 300,000 capacity, or not capacity, just 300,000 people attended at Altamont Raceway um, on December 6th. And uh, it was the rock concert, as all you know, you guys uh, featured the uh, Rolling Stones. And uh, Phil can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody knows what happened there. You know, and, uh, I don't know, what can I say about it anymore, you know? The uh, Hells Angels were... Uh, we, were <laughs> we were chicken to get up there and play. Yeah. I'll tell you. Why? <laughs> because I didn't want to get poked by a Hell's Angel with a bicycle spoke. <laughs> Hell's Angels got paid $500 in beer to do that, yeah. to be yeah. the security. The, the, thi the, the thing about it, it was mostly prospects. That, that it was the wannabe angels who were, who were showing their toughness and, and everything. All, the, all of the members and the leaders were off at some meeting somewhere. So uh, that's, that's what we got. And, I mean, and that was unfortunate. And, and that was the yeah. end, basically, of 1969. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, it was a very it eventful about year. About the end of free concerts, too, you know. True. Um, and so on that note, we are going to play some stuff from 1969. Well, I'm not. These guys are. Thank you, guys.
secret I can never tell. Preset judge with it, well understood. And you got to admit that sweet, sweet jelly so Just Mountains 
of the moon he led through mountains of the moon all along the all along mountains of the moon i hold the carrion crow called him rowdy riddle i hold the carrion crow thou bend to me Thank you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you.
chill holds your learning from books that they were burning.
that trembled and exploded, left a bus stop in its place.
Uh, we're going to take a short break and return with more music for you all.
Hey 
Shine on me, shine on me. I say shine on, shine on me. 
Good time, lonesome feel. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. And what kind of way to get yourself out of that? You gotta find somebody, you gotta get next to them, you gotta dance with them. Might be kind of nice, you know. Take your hands out of your pockets. I see you, you got your hands in your pockets right there. Take them out, man. Take them out. <laughs> You gotta find somebody next to you, get real close. Show them what it's all about, you know. All right, fellas, you got somebody next to you. Why don't you do something? Do something with it. You grab a close. You take a real close. You touch your baby. You get it all up now. You know I got it. I gotta do just what I can. Just what I can. I need a little bit.
that's my babe. Turn on that love light. I asked my babe, won't you turn on that love light? Turn on that little love light. That special little light you got, turn it on. Turn it on. That's my babe. Turn on that little light. Let it shine on me. All I need is a little light. Just a little light. Let it shine on me. Shine on your boy. Sometimes I wake up quarter to five. My baby starts up like a stingray on a 45. She make me feel all right. Oh, she make me feel all right. No, no, no. Like my baby. Turn on that light. Shine on me. Baby, down on my knees, turn on that light. 
Hey guys, how are you doing? Well, thank you again for coming to join us here at, uh, at Terrific Crossroads for our ongoing excursion into the history of the Grateful Dead as they perform throughout the year. But as always, you know, it's a bittersweet moment for me to be able to be here and play with these players in front of you, you my friends, my, our, our community. I'm a liver transplant survivor. I'm only alive today because Cody got up one day and told his mom, hey, if anything ever happens to me, I want to be an organ donor. And he saved the lives of eight people, including me. And that was 15 years ago, and I've been, Cody and I have been very close ever since then. And uh, I'd, li I'd like to invite you all to join me in honoring his generosity of spirit and his courage by turning to someone that you love and that loves you and tell him, hey, if anything ever happens to me, I want to be an organ donor. Simple as that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And this, sh this show we did tonight was kind of a, kind of a strange, had kind of a strange structure. And, and, uh, and we finished playing that show, but uh, we decided we'd uh, dig up some, uh, some, old, some more stuff that uh, was happening in 1969. I'm going to give you a little bit of an extended encore So We've got some more for you in just a minute.
With a tearing in the room All I want to love you from is Beneath the halo moon But you think I should be happy With your money and your name I hide myself in sorrow But pay your cheating in me I never 
was that kind Silver threads and gold and needles And I man this heart of mine You told me goodbye How was I to know You didn't mean goodbye You made 
Oh, oh, oh. 
See 
master is a train running late. He said, how long you been waiting for the 444? Hate to tell you, son, that train don't run here anymore. Chain, chain. Rolling down the track. Train, train. Rolling down the track. So in the midst of all this, we have Cody Dickinson on drum. Jason Crosby on keys and fiddle. Stu Allen on guitar and vocal. Scott Law on guitar and vocal. <laughs> Alex Coford on drums and vocal. <laughs> I'm Phil Lesh, thank you for joining us. We are continuing our journey through the 30 years of Grateful Dead music. And uh, I hope to see most of you tomorrow night. 1970.